then to extend the allowed period of 20 years so that it goes beyond 20 years. Because like now we have done over 10 years, nothing is moving on the ground, and if we, even anything is moving is very little. So imagine whether we'll be able to capture all these resources in the next 10 years. So I think matters implementation should be taken up seriously by this house. And that's why I want to support the recommendation where we are saying as we approve this bill, that within 30 days, we need to come up with a very clear framework in terms of how things are going to be done, in terms of um, realizing the areas, and also implementation, Honorable Speaker. Because that is very, very important, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, if you look at what's up, the issue of the 790 million, which the, the senators are proposing, uh, that was caused because, Honorable Speaker, even though the law requires that once we allocate the money, we should not touch the money. But Treasury has come up with an, uh, a practice whereby every year, if they want to, do, to get money from anywhere to sort another problem in the country, they always go to the equalization fund, reduce the resources, and claim that in the next financial year, they will be able to replenish the, 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 the balances. And I think this, this is a serious matter, Honorable Speaker. So we need to make sure that as a house, we strictly adhere to the financial requirement that once the money is uh, allocated or appropriated for equalization fund, those resources remain there, and we make sure that we push treasury so that the resources are released. And as a result of that, Honorable Chair, then we will be able, Honorable Chair, to realize the, 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 the intended, uh, uh, purpose, intended objectives of this, this, this fund, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, as a committee, we had said this year we'll provide about 3.5 billion, which is part of the areas, which was actually coming to around 11, 11 billion. Now you can see the figures also come down a bit to 10.87. And I think this most more changes are the changes which are affecting this fund. So my plea to this house is, honorable members, we support this bill so that we pave the way for utilization of these resources. And by doing that, we'll be helping other parts of this country which were marginalized. And honorable speaker, if you look at the, 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 the origin of this marginalization, where it started, honorable speaker. Honorable speaker, you realize that the system of paper number one of 1965 was more focused on this country using our resources to develop the high potential areas, which means we left behind the, the ASO areas and other areas which are marginalized. So it is very important that with that background, honorable speaker, that if this house facilitates utilization of these resources in the areas which are marginalized, as a, and as a result of that, we'll be able then to move the country to the rest of the country, to catch up with the rest of the country in terms of development. So with those many remarks, Honorable Speaker, I second and I urge the House to support this bill. Thank you very much. Thank you. I therefore propose that the Equalization Fund Appropriation number two, Bill number 2, Senate Bill number 30 of 2023, be read a second time. I can see there's quite some interest on this. I will give the member from Wingy West. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for giving me this opportunity, actually, to add the voice on this matter, which is actually motto in this country, Madam Speaker. And uh, the first thing, I would like to thank the committee for the work they have done at the Senate, of course, where it has originated, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I recall the CEO, Guyo, met our committee on, the, on this matter. And some of the challenges, actually, he, he told us, it touches on many aspects. And this fund was established constitutionally in 2010 to address the disparities among the counties in terms of development, in, uh, in issues to deal with the water, electricity, health care, and roads, Madam Speaker. And you have heard there are challenges facing this implementation, challenges of the Treasury delaying the uh, releasing of the funds has been the main issue. We are talking in less than actually six years, we have got the deficit of 40 billion which has not been remitted to these counties, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, we need to address this issue, this issue and also 
inform the Treasury that this fund is a constitutional fund and implementation must be taken to avoid lacuna state of our constitution, Madam Speaker. The other issue, of course, in terms of uh, uh, implementation, we need to challenge the Commission on Revenue Allocation to come up with a proper policy, Madam Speaker, of addressing the, the policy of marginalization policy. If you look at this list, the counties which are benefiting, some of them have got similar characteristics like mine in Mwinki West. And my, most of these uh, counties, uh, my place, I'm not even getting equalization fund. We need to come up with another criteria of selecting the areas that are already marginalized. And without even arguing, Mwinki West is one of the most marginalized area in this country. There is no explanation you can tell me, Garissa, Tana River, and most of the constituencies surrounding me are getting equalization fund. And when it comes to Mwinki West, we are not there, Madam Speaker. We are being told we are developed. Majority of the population in my constituency is still lacking access to good roads, access to clean water, access to electricity, access to other health facilities, Madam Speaker. So we need to come up with a clear policy of adding more areas that have already been marginalized, Madam Speaker. And with those few remarks, I support, but still we need to press very hard for uh, Treasury to make sure the areas that have already been in, in cut in this fund are fully remitted to benefit the Kenyans without necessarily delaying them. With those few remarks, I support Madam Speaker. Honorable um, Michael Mushira. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And I start to support the Equalization Fund Appropriation Bill as laid by the Vice Chair Budget. Madam Chair, uh, this fund, uh, as everybody knows, is important to us, uh, to us uh, looking, taking care of the marginalized counties. Uh, and Mr. Speaker, as I am supporting, uh, Madam Speaker, as I am supporting, um, I'd wish to really this house to consider the effectiveness of this fund, because Mr. Speaker, this fund was meant to bring the marginalized counties at par with other counties uh, in the country. But uh, looking at it critically, Madam Speaker, as uh, the report has stated, we started with 14 counties. And one would have um, uh, expected that with time, as we bring these countries, uh, these counties at par with other counties, the counties would reduce below 14. But, Madam Speaker, as you can see, the counties that are marginalized continue increasing. And that means that probably this fund is not being used effectively. Madam Speaker, we've seen uh, some of the counties advertising uh, projects that are not of any significant importance or that are not likely to create any impact to those counties. When you use this fund to do a road of five million, to do things that are not sustainable, Madam Speaker, we would wonder whether uh, these marginalized counties will ever become uh, remove from that uh, bracket of marginalization. Speaker, but having said so, um, now that the CRA is uh, doing the, that marginalization policy, I would um, ask the commission to really do a proper study so that the counties, we would want to know, the counties, the 14 counties that were being considered since 2010, how far have they come out of the marginalization. And uh, we also, now sp uh, speaking for Nyandarwa, Madam Speaker, you find that in Nyandarwa, we have an area called Daragua. Daragua is really marginalized. 
And Madam Speaker, I've always wondered why CRA has never thought of considering Baragua, which is dry, completely dry. People are given food there, a very marginalized uh, um, constituency in Nyandarwa. And therefore, I would wish KRA, uh, CRA sorry, to consider Nyandarwa as a marginalized area in the land marginalization policy, and specifically, not even my constituency, Mr. Speaker, but the Daragua constituency. With those few remarks, I support. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I also join my colleagues and rise to support the Equalization Appropriations Bill as uh, tabled by the Vice Chair, Audra Boemase, of the Budget and Appropriations um, Committee. <clears throat> Madam Speaker, I just want to point out a number of issues regarding the Equalization uh, Fund. And uh, we all know as a country that there was a conversation in 2010 when we were coming up with our constitution. And it was agreed that there are some areas in our country which have been left behind in terms of development for since we got independence, Madam Speaker. And this is something that was canvassed across the country and it, it was agreed and the Equalization Fund was captured in the Constitution. Madam Speaker, it is unfortunate that since the, re since the realization of the Equalization Fund, this is just the second time that funds have been released to the counties that are supposed to benefit from the Equalization Fund, Madam Speaker. And so, and we have had a lot of pull and push in this house, pushing for the release of this money, Madam Speaker. And I'm happy that recently 10 billion was released to the 14 counties. It is unfortunate that when we still have a balance of 39.7 billion counties, Madam Speaker, CRA opened another Pandora's box of going against the 14 counties now we are at 34 counties. We are go going to the third generation formula, Madam Speaker, I don't know how many counties again. You know, there was a reason, a well thought process, why we had the 14 counties, Madam Speaker. You know, when I listen to my colleagues talking about pockets of underdevelopment in their counties, Madam Speaker, while some of us talk about underdevelopment in an entire county, Mr. Uh, Madam Speaker. For example, in Samburu County, we were able to get tarmac just a few years ago, too, that get to Maralal Town, our headquarters, Madam Speaker. While some people are talking about tarmac roads connecting to villages, Madam Speaker. And so it is important for us as a country to appreciate the role that Equalization Fund plays and why these counties were thought through when we were doing our constitution, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I want to talk about the Equalization Fund, the monies once they are released to the counties. The challenge that we see is that once the committee or the people who sit at the county level, Madam Speaker, to come up with the projects that should be funded by the Equalization Fund, we find it that we are looking at very minute, small projects, Madam Speaker, a road of 8 million, a road of 10 million, a road of 11 million, Madam Speaker. Those are functions that the county governments can do. The whole Potent or the reason why the, the country thought about equalization fund was to do mega projects that actually uplift the lives of those people in those counties. And so if it's a major dam, if it's a major water supply issue, if it is a road that is connecting uh, a sub-county and a sub-county or even inter-county, Madam Speaker. Otherwise, the lapse of this equalization fund will get here. And when you look at our county, we are still at the same place. And so I will also urge the governors and even ask members of parliament because we have representatives in, those, uh, in that board, Madam Speaker, that we should look at the bigger picture. It will not sail again. It will not fly in another 10 years. 
10 years, 20 years, we are still talking about marginalization in our counties, in our counties, Madam Speaker. Kenyans will say you've had your time, you've had the fund. What exactly can people see that this fund has done in our counties, Madam Speaker? And so I would urge the, go the governors, because they are the ones who are actually controlling m most of this money uh, uh, now. And one other thing, the things that are agreed by the board, Madam Speaker, that these are our priority areas. The governors should stop going again to sit with their own finance people and sitting with a few people and rearranging what the people on the ground have prioritized to be done through equalization fund, Madam Speaker. And so I want that our governors can look at the bigger picture and see to it that this equalization fund, Madam Speaker, will, will, will deal on very critical issues for us. Finally, and, and, and that is what I want, I, I want to conclude with, Madam Speaker. This whole issue of us as a country, when we see something working for other people, we say that even us, we want from the same place, or we want from that place. There is a reason, and I keep telling some of my colleagues, please come and be a member of Parliament of Samburu and stay one day there. They will not even survive. First from the heat, from the no roads, no water, they will not survive there. And so let the people who benefit from the equalization fund benefit until when we are at a certain level of development. You can Honourable, fight for your Honourable own Naisula, fund. Hold on. Honorable Kwenya, what is out of order? Madam Speaker, is it, I mean, uh, the gracious member should be seated maybe when I'm on, on point of order so that I can address the speaker effectively. Mr. Speaker, you see, the member for Samburu is, is insinuating that uh, we do not have the capacity to represent people anywhere in this country. I don't know from what uh, premise she's speaking from because she doesn't have the, 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 me the measure, so to say, to, to know what Honourable to go through Kwenye, as members are, of parliament. Totally, from. I come from a very cold area. Totally and I, and I believe that any, any member who is in this house can represent members of Kinango. Honorable Kwenya, when your time comes, you can also refer to the same, that they cannot survive in the cold of Kinango. It's a point of debate. Honorable Naisula, continue. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And so I just wanted to say that even as we raise our, our issues, and uh, of the different counties and constituencies that we come from, Madam Speaker, we should do it appreciating the diversity of our country, the different challenges that we face in different parts of the country, Madam Speaker, but not fight or look like we are talking against each other, like demeaning. There is a certain narrative that is go has been going across this country, Madam Speaker, that all the funds that go to the north northeastern region is just being embezzled. It's the one building Nairobi County, Madam Speaker. I don't think corruption is, is, uh, is, re is, re is reserved to a certain part of this country, Madam Speaker. Corruption cuts across from the national government to all parts of this country. And so when you talk about issues of your region, please leave the counties that benefit from equalization fund to benefit because there was a reason why the drafters of the Constitution and Kenyans put the equalization fund there. Thank you, Madam Speaker, for the opportunity. Thank you very much. Honorable Jackson Kosge. Thank you, Madam Speaker. <clears throat> While I support this bill, um, Madam Speaker, I think it is about time we as a country revisit this term, marginalization, with a view of uh, trying to find out if equalization fund was given for 20 years, the question that follows is what happens after that? And what is it that is being done that within 20 years it will have solved the issue of marginalization? I, as I scan through the bill from the Senate, I was looking for one thing. What is the lasting solution? What is a long-term solution? For instance, Madam Speaker, we need to devote a sizable natural 
I mean, resources to exploiting the potential that these areas do have. According to the Natural Resource Development Society, they, or Council for that matter, which is an international body, seems to be indicating that most of the areas we refer to as marginalized areas do have immense natural resources underneath. Do we think as a country that by exploiting these natural resources within the period given to the marginalized areas, we should have been able to develop a program that will exploit those natural resources and that will complement in the economy of the country. With that, Madam Speaker, I think we need to also divine the nature and areas of marginalization so that we can avoid a moving target in terms of divining the target and the purpose of this fund. This will become predictable and it will become um, manageable in terms of divining the call. With that, Madam Speaker, I support the bill. Thank you. Member for Tinderets. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I rise to support this report by, from the Senate. The drafters of the Constitution looked at the problems, looked at the, our country with very objective mind. Madam Speaker, you'll realize that the Equalization Fund was actually put forward by the drafters of the Constitution so that by the end of the day, we bring the whole country to one level. Madam Speaker, the issues raised especially on the Equalization Fund, having uh, by various speakers, is actually very important. And I want to note the issues raised by members from the ASAL, members from the less developed areas, members from the marginalized uh, parts of the country. And by marginalized or less developed, it doesn't mean it is not talking about the sun, the heat, and many others. There are so many factors that we put into consideration. The inaccessibility of places, the, the level of development, the poverty index, and many others. So, Madam Speaker, the drafters of the Constitution in 2012, in, in 2010, realized that for us to be one, one nation, one people, we must bring all to almost an equitable level playing field. So that Kenyans in various parts of this country will feel that we are one nation, one people, one society, and therefore this fund actually is trying to bring areas that are poorly developed in terms of infrastructure, in terms of, uh, when I talk of infrastructure, I'm talking about road network, we are talking about water network to homes, schools, colleges, and various parts even hospitals. A number of areas in this country, uh, Madam Speaker, especially in the northern part, are actually having a hospital up to almost 20 kilometers apart, some even more than those, that, that, that range. And while in other areas, hospitals and schools are in less than three, four kilometers away. So, it will be good that this fund is enhanced. This fund is dis disbursed on time. This fund is well managed so that what the drafters or the intention of the drafters of the Constitution is realized earlier than scheduled. Because if you look at the, the, at, at the, at the schedule, this fund is supposed to take uh, up to 20 years. As said by members, it is the second year, meaning that the last eight years, the last ten years, this fund has not been disbursed. 
it has not been utilized well. So the intentions cannot be realized. And in fact, it will even mean that there is need to extend the time frame beyond the scheduled 20-year period when the, the drafters felt that if this fund is utilized well, other parts of the country will come to par with the, with the developed parts of the country. Two, the management of the fund. And I want to say that my constituency is actually one of the uh, beneficiaries. But it, it is not the whole part of it. Areas where, because it's very hilly, it is not having good roads, the level, the standards of living are quite low, and so many other th things affect it. But I want to discuss this, especially on administration of the fund. That as much as the money has been disbursed, it will be prudent that this, the, the, the county government, which is actually the administrator of the fund, should actually look into it to make sure that there is value for resources, to make sure that the funds are located for the roads, the funds are located for the hospitals, the funds are located for water. The people, the beneficiaries are actually going to get those particular resources. So, Madam, Madam Speaker, I want to say that this fund is actually very important for the whole part of the world. If you look at areas where we have no bridges, where we have no road network, where we have no hospitals, where we have no dispensaries, this fund is going to be very, very important. And I want to say this. I heard the, the member for Samburu Lili talking about the, 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 the level of development in her region. I want this house to look at it, that we look our country as one. That one part of the country which is less developed is part of our country. The people who are low in development are also our people. And if we have everyone up, then the whole nation will develop. I want to take the case, I think most of uh, what other nations have done. If you look at the United States, for example, in the 1920s, 1930s, we had regions, very dry regions, even the Tennessee Valley, for example, which was actually one of the least developed parts. And even the Nevada and many parts. China has done the same. Many parts of the world have done the same. This is not something that we have picked it from the blues. It is something that any national leader, any leader who wants to bring his country to the same table, so that when Turkana is doing well, when Mandera is doing well, then anyone else could also feel to be part and parcel of that particular part of the world. So in effect, I'm just calling that, let these funds be disbursed on time, let this fund be increased, not to be at the same level as it were, and then this fund, let it be administered in a very, uh, let it be managed very efficiently to make sure that the benefits that were intended to achieve, even the construction of uh, hospitals, the construction of roads, the, 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 the having water in those particular areas, electricity, and many others, will be, will be realized at a faster rate, and therefore, we will come at the same level as Kenyans and as one people. I support uh, Madam Chair. Thank you. Honorable uh, Thank you, Madam Speaker. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Speaker, for, for allowing me also to ventilate into this issue of um, equalization fund. Madam Speaker, and like what my colleagues have said, uh, Madam Speaker, the reason why uh, the drafters of the Constitution looked into three, three areas where money was supposed to be divided, Madam Speaker, because when you look at the Constitution, the Constitution states that money shall be divided among three entities. Entity one is the national government, entity two is the county governments, entity three is the equalization fund. But I'm speaking, the reason why the drafters of the Constitution looked at the equalization fund 
was because of so many reasons. And I think one of the reasons is, Madam Speaker, if you look at the concept of the colonial wars, if you look at the concept of even the colonialists invading other countries, it was because of fight for resources. When you look at tribal wars, wherever they are, whether from time immemorial to the current, it is because of fight for resources. When you look at even the political contests that we have, in every country, in every country, Madam Speaker, the bottom line is that everybody, everybody is fighting for resources. And that is the reason why we have all these contests. And I think the reason why the drafters of the Constitution felt that we should have an allocation called Equalization Fund was because they realized that from time immemorial, there are areas which have been marginalized, both by governments and by nature. Madam Speaker, when I speak about governments, I mean there has been successive governments in this country, from the colonial government to the pre-independence or after independence. We have had governments and successive governments. And when the drafters of the Constitution were looking at this equalization fund, they meant, and their major intention was that, look at the areas which has never had any favor by any government. And that was meant to be equalized with the rest of the country. Madam Speaker, there are also areas which have been marginalized by nature or by natural causes. Areas which do not or is not even able to do agriculture and any other uh, 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 agricultural activities or economic activities, Madam Speaker, that can help those areas. This is an area where the drafters of the Constitution intended to allocate this money. Madam Speaker, the Constitution Article 204 states that there shall be one and a half percent of allocation to the equalization. Madam Speaker, it also talked about the marginalized areas and it talked about the marginalized communities. That is on section six, I think section four, section five, where it is talking about the marginalized communities and marginalized counties. Madam Speaker, when the CRA started working on these particular marginalized counties, Madam Speaker, it picked 14. And the reason why they picked 14, 14, Madam Speaker, was based on several issues, just like what my brother here said, poverty index and so many other, uh, so many other issues, Madam Speaker. The 14, Madam Speaker, it was supposed to be allocated money from 2010, immediately after the promulgation of the Constitution. Madam Speaker, my constituency was one of the beneficiaries because it was falling under another county. It's falling under another county, Madam Speaker. But we benefited five years after the promulgation of the Constitution. And after that, Madam Speaker, no any other money has been allocated. The only other time, Madam Speaker, when this money was allocated is, I think it is now. So we have had two allocations. And when you read, Madam Speaker, Section 6, um, Section 5 of Article 204, it states the unspent money, what is supposed to be done to the unspent money? It is supposed to be kept and utilized. But if you were to do a simple math, Madam Speaker, from 2010 up to 2024, which is 14 years, how much money is that? Who has been spending that money? Where is that money? We are almost, we are six years to the, to the sunset of this particular fund. Madam Speaker, and not even that, before the CRA introduced another model of allocating this money, because initially, Madam Speaker, the 14 counties which were benefiting only benefited once. By the time they introduced 34 counties, Madam Speaker, what happened to the money that was supposed to be spent on the 14 counties? Because the 14 counties came up to late 2020. These 14 counties, which are supposed to benefit from 2010, 2011, 2012, up to 2020, and have never benefited, what will happen to the money that was supposed to be sent to these particular 
uh, counties. Madam Speaker, even when I look at the current allocation, Madam Speaker, done by CRA, it's, it's alarming. It has never even assisted anybody because the 14 marginalized counties has never risen from where they were. In fact, just like what my colleague has said, the number of marginalized counties are increasing. They increased from 14 to 34. What does that tell you, Madam Speaker? It tells you the government is doing nothing to alleviate the poverty level of our people. So that by now, instead of 14, we are now have 34 counties which are marginalized. Who is marginalizing these counties, Madam Speaker? So me, myself, I support this amendment by the Senate, but I would wish, I would wish the committee concerned to relook, and that is a budget committee, to relook into areas, into the monies which has not been spent from 2010 to the current, and ensure that the 14 counties which were allocated this money from 2010 to 2020 are given their money so that they can spend on the correct, uh, on the right uh, projects which they had stated or which are stated in the Constitution. Madam Speaker, I, I wish as a, as a, as a, as a beneficiary of, of this particular uh, allocation, Madam Speaker, to state also that inside the marginalized counties, Inside even the, I mean, inside the equalization fund, Madam Speaker, which was meant to cure the marginalization, there is also a very serious marginalization inside the picked counties. Because, Madam Speaker, if you look even at how the disparities which were done, you go and start identifying using the sublocations or even wards so that if this money was allocated one constituency, you will realize they are allocating maybe two or three words. What will the rest of the words say? It is causing a lot of turmoil. So, Madam Speaker, my, my contribution is that the committee concerned, which is the budget committee, should look into the monies or the, uh, the balance which was not allocated to these marginalized counties so that they can get their fair share. Secondly, Madam Speaker, the CRA should use a model that will purely identify the areas which were marginalized both by the, um, by, by the governments and by, the, um, by nature so that we can actually bring these people to the equal level. Otherwise, Madam Speaker, we'll be saying we are doing uh, equalization or we are, we are allocating equalization funds and not doing what is supposed to be done. So, Madam Speaker, I wish to support and, and, um, and wish to ensure, uh, or ask the committee that is concerned to ensure that they employ upon the, the CRA so that they can do proper uh, allocation of these particular funds. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Barosa. Madam Speaker, I want to thank you for this opportunity. And Madam Speaker, right from the onset, I'd like to lend my support to the Equalization and Appropriation Bill from the Senate. Madam Speaker, I stand on the strength of our Constitution, which was promulgated in 2010. That Constitution dictates that every Kenyan is equal to the other Kenyan. Madam Speaker, which means that Every area in this country is as important as any other area. Madam Speaker, because of that, in the Constitution, you find very many affirmative action programs, either to bring people who are otherwise undermined to the point of level with every other Kenyan, or to bring areas that are underdeveloped to the point that they were nearly as equally as developed as all the other areas in Kenya. And Madam Speaker, that's where the Equalization Fund comes in. To bring up those areas which are underdeveloped in key elements that are necessary for human life, like education, infrastructure, including hospitals, 
including schools, including roads, so that we all feel like, indeed, we are all Kenyans. Madam Speaker, I served as a commissioner in the IIBRC Commission, also known as the Legale Commission. Madam Speaker, I went around the whole country. And Madam Speaker, I'd like to let you know that there are parts of this country that are so remote, parts of this country that do not have what we call roads. Madam Speaker, many of those children in those, in those parts of the country have not even seen cars. Madam Speaker, Equalization Fund was meant to make these people who are in the, such parts of the country to actually feel like they belong to this country called Kenya. And Madam Speaker, for this reason, I support this, um, uh, this bill. Because this bill will bring those areas that are undermined or underdeveloped to the fore so that they are also developed nearly as possible as the other parts of this country. Madam Speaker, it's a shame that we are almost getting to the 20 years time limit for this equalization fund. What will then happen when 20 years lapse and not, we've not benefited for, from this equalization bill, uh, equalization uh, affirmative amendment, I mean affirmative action uh, opportunity? Just because money that's been appropriated has never been used towards this effort. Madam Speaker, I support this amendment bill from the Senate because what it does is it locks in the money that is meant for equalization fund such that even if one financial year passes, it will still be locked for that purpose that it was intended for. Because that is the only way to go, to ensure that those areas that are underdeveloped are actually the money that's intended to bring them up is used for that purpose. Madam Speaker, as I stand here, because I believe in this equalization, I mean, I believe that the whole country is not equal. Madam Speaker, for that reason, I will never support this one man, one shilling, one vote, whatever it's called. Madam Speaker, because this country, there's so much discrepancy in the development of this country. And you need equalization fund, you need affirmative action to bring other Kenyans who are not benefiting like every other Kenya, to the fore, so that they can also enjoy being Kenyans. Madam Speaker, I want to say again, categorically, I support this bill. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Majority Whip. My point of order. No, you can't yes. raise a point of order. I'll first give member for Masabit the deputy whip. How do you contradict your party leader? <laughs> Honorable Speaker, Honorable thank you. you on the floor. Continue. Thank you for allowing me to contribute to this uh, equalization fund appropriation number two bill. And um, from the onset, I want to confirm that I fully support this. Honorable Speaker, it is unfortunate that so many years down the line, we are still debating and no much progress has been recorded as a result of this. Honorable Speaker, we should be guided by the purpose of this equalization fund. Many honorable members have already said that this was to address the marginalized areas. When we talk of marginalized areas, many people do not understand the situation in those areas. These funds initially was to bring at par the 14 counties, namely Turkana, Mandera, Wajia, Marsabit, Samburu, West Pokot, Tana River, Narok, Kwale, Garissa, Kilivi, Taita Tafeta, and Lamu. But unfortunately today as we stand, the number of the counties that need to come at par with others has grown, not because of clear justification, but just because others want to compete with these areas that have been marginalized, marginalized since independence. The purpose of equalization fund is number one, to improve on roads, road network, water, electricity, and hospitals. Madam Speaker, I come 
from Marsabit, which is part of the 14 marginalized area, the initial 14 marginalized areas. And in that part of the world, it is just like seven years ago that we saw Tamak two passing through our county. And to date, we do not have even connecting roads to our villages. We are still struggling. Water is a real problem even where I come from. And yet I live in town. Electricity. Many people still live in the same problem that we used to live in. Where we do not have electricity connectivity to the villages. These are basic needs. And any responsible government has to work hard to make sure that every part of the country is at the same level, progressing and developing at the same rate. Unfortunately, for over 50 years, most of these counties have been marginalized. And these funds have been sitting somewhere without supporting any county, any individual. And that is why today we are debating on the same. But the unfortunate bit, the counties that needed to benefit from this has grown from 14 to 34. To 34. What does this mean? It means that the funds that was to support and help the real marginalized areas is now scattered and distributed among many counties such that it will not make any positive impact on the counties that have suffered for the last many years since independence. We need our education system to be improved, infrastructure, we need water, roads, our hospitals. Up to today, in some of our counties, people travel for over 300 kilometers. And imagine, or imagine of an expectant mother who is in labor on a rough road traveling for 300 kilometers. Most of them have lost their lives as they, are, as, as they struggle on the roads. Most majority of them have also delivered on the road. Is that what we want to continue hearing in the 21st century? No. And that is why, yes, many counties still need this money, but we should go back to the original 14 counties so that the 14 counties can grow and come to par with other counties. Honorable Speaker, as we talk of this, again, any fund that goes to the counties, most of the time are mismanaged. It is unfortunate because we fight for more resources to go to the counties. But unfortunately, at the county level, corruption, again, is practiced at a very high level. And so the monies that are meant to bring development and growth goes into people's pocket. In fact, most of the time, it does not even benefit the counties, but it gets out of the counties because those individuals in the counties invest out of their own counties. And that is why we should demand for proper usage and accountability of any funds that will be released under equalization fund. Again, when it comes to um, implementation of this, the usual practice of tender and people giving uh, given contracts to do any particular development. Honorable Speaker, the experience is these tenders are given to close friends or relatives or even people from outside those counties. And that is why as members of parliament, we should make sure that these tenders get into the hands of individuals working and living in those counties so that that money can be generated and can benefit the local business people. 
a lot of local business people have lost their businesses because they have not been supported and even if as they even if they do businesses they have not been able to generate good income because of poor economy and that is why we need to enhance those people who are already doing businesses at the local level and make sure that the money that the profit that they get will just circulate and assist the people uh, within their counties again honorable speaker the 22.7 billion arrears the treasury should strategize or come up with a plan of releasing these monies because if we uh, do it in many years it will not have any positive impact it is like a drop in an on an ocean let treasury make sure that these monies are released as soon as possible and also provide proper guidance so that any project anything that will be done by this money will have positive impact on the growth of our people and also on the growth of the different counties honorable speaker we have i have already mentioned about the usage there is a lot of wastage when it comes to usage of money from the national government to the counties it is upon us and upon our people the responsible people holding different offices so that we be good stewards and every coin that is meant for every anybody or any progress be it water be it roads be it hospital should be used in those manners so that we you know we elevate the lives of our people we improve their lives and once we get proper health facilities you can imagine the hospital bills that we keep incurring today all politicians over the weekend we normally you know uh, get a lot of requests from people and do a lot of fundraising once we do this and invest in hospitals health centers then we will overcome that proper roads the many accidents we have and especially after the destruction that has been made by the rains we can be able to reduce the suffering of the people on the ground honorable speaker i support and i believe that kenyans will make use good use of the money and also plan well so that the counties can really benefit and their lives can be transformed thank you and i support the majority whip the majority leader uh, honorable speaker thank you very much uh, honorable speaker i want to say this i am one of the proponents of the uh, this fund because this fund is one of the very important funds in the constitution the constitution is very clear it talks about funds should be given counties national government and third this uh, fund that we are talking about those three funds but what has happened over the time the two funds the other two funds have been very important but this other fund the equalization fund has been neglected but it is a constitutional provision this this house has a committee called uh, constitution implementation committee whose role is to ensure that the constitution is implemented in the spirit and in the latter but for the many uh, years i've been in this house that committee has never spoken about the equalization fund neither has it brought a motion here neither has it interjected during budget to say that it is important that uh, uh, the equalization fund must be uh, given as money is given to the counties so is the equalization fund given to those counties that have been earmarked for equalization that is the tragedy of of the committee we have here and that is the tragedy of kenya that at the onset of the constitution at the onset of the constitution 
It was agreed by all Kenyans who voted in the referendum, including the people from my constituents, who woke up very early in the morning, going to vote for the constitution, knowing that inside that constitution, there is something, something called equalization fund that would take care of them because they have been, for many years, been marginalized, for many years they have been underserved, for many years no meaningful development has taken place there because in 1963-65 there, a sessional paper was allowed in this country to deliberately and systematically marginalize certain communities, including the communities at the coast. Today, honorable speaker, we are at that crossroad. That crossroad that isn't this, this equalization fund as important as the money that is sent to the counties, as the money that is sent into the national. When well, the honorable Didi Nyoro here does the budget, he will tell us about the money that will go to the counties. He will tell us about the trillions that will go to the national government. But he lays least emphasis on the equalization fund. And when that happens, in this house, when CDF does not come, we all in solidarity make noise that CDF exchequer must be released. When counties do not receive their money, we make noise, the Council of Governors is there and they make noise about about, uh, you know, money has not been released. But what is the organ? Honorable Speaker, this is the question. What is the organ that is mandated to safeguard and ensure that, marginal, that, that this uh, equalization fund is put in place? What is the organ? There was a time when I wasted my shoes every day walking to the PS for treasure. Who was said, to, up till today, he's supposed to be the person in charge of distributing that uh, PSC Treasury. That. But PSC Treasury is the culprit even when it comes to uh, uh, CDF, when it comes to uh, county government money, it comes to exchequer releases. So what will he do? If he's under pressure from county government, he will release the money. When he is under pressure from national government, he will the National Assembly will release the money to, to, uh, to NGCDF. But who puts pressure? on the equalization fund. And that is the structure that is missing in the implementation of the equalization fund. Because when this is a fund, I think, I remember uh, Kamkert tried to propose some changes. And even we looked at that act and we said, let's form a board. A board like the NGCDF board. A board like the, uh, the, the, the county, the council of governors. Who will ensure that equalization fund is disbursed at the same time when NGCDF is disbursed. But the politics that has been there, Honorable Speaker, and this is why I will uh, want to challenge the lawyers in this uh, house, including the Honorable Emilio Diam. We need to amend that law. That we must amend. So that at the end of the day, Honorable Speaker, the people that have been marginalized systematically in this country get a fair share of what the Constitution intended them to have. Get a fair share. But as it is today, I heard the Honorable Mary Emerson say that we have a balance of 62 billion. 62 billion. That has not been paid systematically over the years. But if it is a fund, you cannot have that. If it is called a fund in the Constitution, it means is if it is allocated 100 billion a year, that 100 billion must be paid within that year. And we should not have a balance. And if there is a balance, it should be accumulated and given to that account. That's what it is. And if it is a fund, it must have an account into which it must be put because it is a fund. Where is the, uh, where is the account for the equalization fund? Where is it domiciled? Where is it? We want to see how much money is in there. Otherwise, now we should be having a lot of money because we have done eight years. And eight years out of the 20 years that the Constitution provides, we have done eight years. And each year, money is set in the budget for equalization fund. fund. So that money systematically needs to be accounted for. Where is, where is that $62 billion? Which account? And why is it that Treasury never puts that money there? I have projects that were started in 2017 in my, in my constituency, when this thing started. And they have been, have been completed. And when you ask ministry, they say, you see, Treasury has not released. Until now, we are saying 
that now county governments have come and county governments now are saying they must implement, after the court ruling, county governments are saying they must also implement equalization funds. There are certain functions that are for the, for the uh, national government. I don't begrudge that. But the problem I have is I want to see systematically that there is an account in the county government for equalization fund, which we can audit as members from those, those areas, those counties. But we don't have that opportunity to do that. So where does the equalization money go? It comes in as part of the grants that come from national government so the governor can use it on functions even which are not listed. You know the equalization fund has only four functions. Only four functions in the constitution. Roads, health, water, and uh, it's not electricity, it's something else. There are four. Health. Yeah? Health. health. Only four. There are four functions. But when a governor gets the money, what will stop a governor from using the money to buy a red carpet for his functions when he receives it as bulk money? What will stop the governor from using this same money to do things that are not within the constitution. How do we audit equalization fund? Where is the law? What has the Committee on Implementation of Constitution done to ensure that this money is properly accounted for? My people, Kilifi is one of the areas that was identified as marginalized. And a lot of the counties in the coast and those in the north, they, this nation, when we went to vote for the constitution, we knew and I want to vote for the Constitution knowing that I have money that will fast track my county to be at the same level as Kiambu, as Kakamega, as others. But that dream is buried in the soil, dead, that dream of my people. Why? Because we have, and previous government, have systematically ensured that there is no proper law to put into account the use of equalization. I think that has been the trick, that as long as we don't have a law, we can run away from disbursing equalization fund. But the law, honorable speaker, you know, you're a lawyer, you know. When something is identified as a fund, in the, just like we have consolidated fund, just like we have uh, the, the CRF, you know, it's a fund. You can't run away from putting money there. But what we will do, we will put money in another place and leave equalization. Because there is a belief, the people from the coast, the people from uh, the north, the people from those other areas that are major, are not as important as the others. We are continuing the 1963 uh, uh, sessional paper. We are continuing the same thing. But we have a constitution we must obey. Just like you can obey giving money to the counties, we must obey giving the equalization fund. That is the constitution of this republic. So when we stand to uphold that constitution in this parliament and any other office and we say we are swearing by this constitution, why are we failing to implement it for the people, the people that have been systematically marginalized in this country? Why? why? Because they are not important? I think it is time that those of us who have been marginalized to stand up and say no, if money for counties is the release, money for equalization must be released. Money for national government is released for NGCD, money for equalization. We Bro and Baya, why are you looking at me like uh, you want more minutes? <laughs> the Honorable Mili Grace Akoto Diambo Mabona, the MP for Super North. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me this opportunity. Mr. Speaker, I wish to support this bill. And in supporting this bill, Mr. Speaker, I want to say that I've worked for in many years on the issue of equality and the issue of equity. Where equality is about making sure that everybody is at par. Equity is about bringing those who are behind to the same level as the ones who are ahead. Mr. Speaker, the Equality Fund seeks to realize equity. And um, I want to say very proudly that I played a big role in the provision of this also in the Constitution amongst other people. And Mr. Speaker, I, even though I agreed with what some of my colleagues, I want to disagree in some respects, and especially in relation to the member from Samburu. I know that when we had the first policy, it had 14 counties. 
And I know that, uh, I know there's a member who was contributing and kept referring to 14 counties. It's no longer 14 counties with good reason. There are no 14 counties in the Constitution. And the first policy tried to identify 14 counties based on history of what we have considered as marginalized in this country. And Mr. Speaker, after the implementation of those 14 counties, one of the things that was coming out clearly is that there are definitely pockets of marginalization in this country. I'll give you an example of my own constituency. And I'm glad that Mfangano Island and Gembe wards in my constituency, Mfangano is actually in our sub-county, have been included. And I want to say that one of the reasons that Mfangano Island has been included is one, for you to reach Mfangano Island, you can only go by water. There is no road. There is no public transport by the government for you to go there. So if you have no money, you have no way of getting there. Let's start from there. <laughs> Secondly, the ring road on Mfangano Island, for the very first time, has been done. And the president himself went there to um, launch the ring road. Why was he launching it? Not because he was doing a tarmac, but because they are doing a maram road. Because in Fangano Island, there is no maram road. So if you want to tell me, let us be equal and look at uh, counties in general. When will we ever reach Mfangano Island where there is no maram? If I go to my cons in Fangano Island, sometimes I take my photos in my constituency. And I hear people who are ignorant, when they see me in a motorbike or walking, they say you are doing PR. In Fangano Island, I will use a four-wheel, I'll use a boat to reach there. I will use a four-wheeler up to a point. I will use a motorbike up to a point. And then the areas I just have to walk. Even a motorbike can't reach. When we say that we are only going to areas, counties that are generally marginalized, when will we ever reach Fangano Island? You can say the same thing of, or in, in relation to parts of Gembe that has also been included. There are areas that have no schools, no roads, and they are perennially cut off. In fact, recently when uh, we had the rains, a place in my constituency called Sikri is always cut off. And people have to go by boat, students' schools stop in order, in order for you know, the rains to stop. And if you are to wait, for that, so that the places that are generally marginalized as counties are to be reached, then when will we get there? We are creating new areas of marginalization. We must carry everybody together. I know that there are areas that are experts at pushing the agenda and by screaming marginalization, which is okay because they are marginalized. Our areas, we don't scream marginalization. We tend to scream democracy. But I can tell you, Mr. Speaker, we will be screaming democracy and marginalization. And if you want to know that there are areas, especially Luanyanza, I'm sorry to use the word Luanyanza, that have been marginalized because of our political leanings over years. Opposition areas never get money. In fact, I am so happy that we get CDF. The first time I saw a school, a wonderful school as I was passing in your constituency, actually, and when I was passing and I saw a nice school and I was like, before I became an MP, and I said, wow, that's a nice school. Because it was a very transformative school. And I was told that school is built by CDF. And I was so proud to discover that it's my grandfather that actually donated that land. But if it weren't for CDF, a lot of schools in our areas would still be mad walled because of our politics, which is opposition. And Mr. Speaker, it is unfortunate that even if you look at, look at even uh, uh, the U.S. that they are going through elections now, there are people who are in government and people who are in opposition. That's the essence of democracy. Mr. Speaker, having said that, I actually want to say that we are missing the point. We are referring to the Constitution without even making reference to what that Constitution says in relation to marginalization. And Mr. Speaker... I want to say that if you look at the interpretation clause of the Constitution, it says marginalized, marginalization uh, includes traditional community, community that out of a need or a desire to preserve its unique culture and identity 
from assimilation has remained outside the integrated social economic life of Kenya as a whole. That would include the Suba people or an indigenous community that has retained and maintained a traditional lifestyle and li livelihood based on hunter or gatherer, eco gatherer economy. That would include the fishing community or pastoral persons or communities, whether they are a nomadic or settled community, that because of its relative geographic isolation has experienced only marginal participation in the integrated social and economic life of Kenya as a whole. So, Mr. Speaker, it actually talks to very many areas of the country. It doesn't only talk to northern Kenya, which I agree is marginalized, but so is my constituency. And I also want to say that if you look at the same uh, interpretation section, it says marginalized group is defined as a group of people who because of laws or practices before, on or after the effective date were or are disadvantaged by discrimination on one or more of the following grounds in Article 27.4. And those grounds include race, sex, pregnancy, marital status, health, ethnic or social origin, color, age, disability, religion, conscience, amongst other things. Mr. Speaker, if you look at the issue of marginalization, it is much bigger than what we are trying to limit it here. I want to agree that there are areas that have been marginalized, including northern Kenya, including coastal areas in Kenya, including Suba areas, and that's why you see both Suba North and South are included. That's why Ndiwa is included, because those are areas that have been marginalized. In fact, other parts of Nyanza and Omabe would be marginalized, save that God was gracious, and they have fine weather, and so they do well economically. Other areas may not have that, but that. The weather, as I saw one, I had one member talking to, is not included in the definition of marginalization. Having said that, Mr. Speaker, I want to say that I want to encourage and agree with my, my committee, the budget committee, that the areas should be released so that we see the effective use of this fund. And I also want to say that when you give this money like Penadol, to a person with malaria, you are not going to cure it. You need to give this medicine, like you are giving serious medicine, maybe chloroquine, I don't know what the current medicine is, because I don't get malaria anymore. But if the way you can give uh, chloroquine to a person who has malaria, not penadone. And because of that, we need to actually provide more money. In my constituency, for instance, it's only 19 million. What will 19 million do to Vangano Island? together with the Gembe. It's little, we are appreciating of it because we are included, but I want to say that even when that po third policy comes, we must include those areas or pockets of marginalization, and we must remain true to the constitutional definition of marginalization. We are not marginalized because we speak loud. We are marginalized as a matter of fact. And I want to also agree or with the members that have said that we must also bring into account what people are also getting. This is not the only money people are getting. We are getting CDF, we are getting this money, and we are getting allocation in ministries. And I sit in budget, and I can tell you that there are areas that are getting marginalization, they are getting money through public participation, they are getting money through direct allocation from ministries. It's just that my time is up. But there's a lot to be checked when we are dealing with marginalization, I support. The Honorable Mili, the Honorable Joshua Kimilu, MP for Kaiti. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me this opportunity to contribute on this uh, important motion uh, about uh, uh, equalization funds. Mr. Speaker, I want to say these funds are very important uh, to our areas, those are marginalized. Although, Mr. Speaker, is a support. I want to say a lot has to be done, should be done, uh, Mr. Speaker, because I think there are also areas uh, which are marginalized and they are not benefiting from these funds. Uh, Mr. Speaker, when you go to some counties, like uh, early this year I traveled to Wanjia County, and Mr. Speaker, I was uh, shocked to see a county without an uh, electricity net network, Mr. Speaker. And these are the areas we need to fight for them to benefit from these funds. Because, Mr. Speaker, if we are Kenyans, as Kenyans, we need to mind of those areas which are marginalized, Mr. Speaker. 
Mr. Speaker, these are the funds which uh, need to be given to these counties to do like, especially if you talk of all the centers. In this century, Mr. Speaker, there are some areas whereby you can tra uh, travel for more than uh, 20 kilometers to look for a health center. Despite uh, county money, Mr. Speaker, these are the areas which need to benefit by this uh, equalization fund, Mr. Speaker. Because health centers are key, Mr. Speaker. In my constituency, uh, I have it's early places, Mr. Speaker. And going from one health center to another one, Mr. Speaker, sometimes it's a challenge because of uh, uh, the transport. Mr. Speaker, from my constituency to get a maram, Mr. Speaker, you need to travel more than 50 kilometers, Mr. Speaker, to make those roads. So, Mr. Speaker, I think this money can help on, in uh, making uh, roads in our uh, counties and also improving Trump, uh, the transport sector in our area, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I think this money uh, should be increased and also released at the right time, Mr. Speaker, because it's very important to help our people who are uh, languishing in poverty because there are some counties which are living in a very low uh, status, Mr. Speaker. And with this money, it can help in uh, health centers, roads, uh, water, like some areas, Mr. Speaker, from where the county I come from, Mr. Speaker, there are some areas whereby to get water, you have to travel more than 10 kilometers to access water, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, with this money, I think we can do boreholes, water pumps, which can also help and uh, try to alleviate poverty from our areas, Mr. Speaker. This money, Mr. Speaker, can also help in mobilization of community and capacity building, Mr. Speaker. Because if you do capacity building in an in a area, in fact, you'll be, you help that community to alleviate poverty, Mr. Speaker, which can assist and also help uh, to improve education. Mr. Speaker, these uh, equalization plans also, although we have seen here, Mr. Speaker, and that's why sometimes I, all, I speak in this house and say, the CDF we have is not even enough to improve education in our constituency, Mr. Speaker. Because there are some areas where the, there are no schools, there are no uh, infrastructure, Mr. Speaker, and with assistance, with the little money we get from CDF, uh, together with these equalization funds, Mr. Speaker, I think we can uh, benefit a child of this country, Mr. Speaker. So I think, Mr. Speaker, I want to support uh, this motion, and I want to say that as Kenyans, we need to stand with this fund and try when it comes to accountability, Mr. Speaker. Because the counties are uh, the custodian of this money, Mr. Speaker, we need also to look on uh, checks and balances to be done to those counties to make sure that this money is well spent and goes to the right uh, people, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. I support. The Honorable Francis Igei, MP for Sotik. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank you for giving the opportunity to also talk on this topical issue and support this bill, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it takes a person who has worked in this place, who has visited these areas, to understand the problems these people are facing. And I know the MPs from these areas, and those of us like myself, Mr. Speaker, who has worked in these areas for many years. Mr. Speaker, in the border. Uh, which order number? The Honorable Mr. Francis Igei, until the speaker stops you. Mr. Speaker, you speaking. I, I want to say, Mr. Speaker, I worked in Garissa for five years, and I understand what the problems people in this area are facing. Mr. Speaker, I want to tell you, Mr. Speaker, if you go to a place like Amuma, go to a place like Almagala in Garissa, you understand this problem. Mr. Speaker, I want to say two things. Number one, I want to thank the framers of this constitution which is 
very, very important, and we, which is leading in Africa, that they thought very clearly, with a lot of wisdom, that we must bring up people who are under, under, under develop, developed in this country to come to power with other, other parts of the country. Mr. Speaker, I think we need to address the issue of legal framework. Mr. Speaker, this fund is like a fund free for all, Mr. Speaker. Because there is no legal framework to show the use of these funds. And I want to say, I want to recommend, Mr. Speaker, that we ring fence, we ring fence this fund so that when it is dispersed to the, to the counties, it is known that it's going to a particular area, education, infrastructure, roads, health, so that we are specific about where, where this money is going to. Mr. Speaker, we need also to address the issue of corruption. We know, Mr. Speaker, and we need to know how much money has gone there before we ask for more. Of course, we need to ask for more money. But how has the money which was dispersed a while ago was spent in, this, in these counties? So, Mr. Speaker, I want us to address the issue of uh, wastage so that our people can be able to get the money. Wastage is a major problem, and we need to address that. One. Mr. Speaker, I also need, we need to ask ourselves, what is the problem with disbursement? What is Parliament has as a this money for, for these counties. What happened in the situation? And how can we address this issue of non disbursement So that, Mr. Speaker, we are able to know what, what is the problem. This, this House, Mr. Speaker, is the final authority to appropriate money and disperse this money. But where is the problem? Bureaucracy, Mr. Speaker, must be addressed. So that the money which, which this House has appropriated is released without any delay so that these people can be able to address this thing. Again, Mr. Speaker, we need to address ourselves and say, okay, we have had problems with disbursement, inadequate funds. So how do we address this issue of um, the, 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 the huge disparities in these counties? Mr. Speaker, this country belongs to all of us, and this country must be developed or at equal measure so that our people can be at, at, at bar in terms of development. Mr. Speaker, I want to say I support this motion, and I would like to thank the committee uh, of budget and appropriation for the good uh, work, well done, and we need to see this money going to the people of this country. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honorable Dr. Eva King Yobar, <laughs> MP for Kabundo Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, for giving me the opportunity, and at onset, let me also support the committee uh, for this report. Uh, Mr. Ch Speaker, really a lot has already been said by our colleagues on this matter, and uh, I want to thank once again the drafters of the Constitution for coming up with this, the marginalization, the equalization fund that was to address the marginalized area. They were clear on what it was supposed to be by ensuring that the 0 0.5 of the national government revenues was allocated to the marginalized region. Mr. Speaker, we have heard the report on what has been disbursed to date and what arrears is due. It's unfortunate that even as this is happening, they are telling us on the report that not much has been achieved in the areas that there was a work was supposed to have been done. But Mr. Speaker, it would have been nice if they were able to come up with a clear evaluation of the projects that have been done over the years in these areas so that we can see where the focus was and why they are saying that it has not helped. Mr. Speaker, even 22 billion that has been allocated to date is not small money. It was allocated to the 14 original counties, and they are still saying that the, the money is not enough, and it was not enough to go around because of the manner in which it was being disbursed. At this point, I want to call upon the Treasury 
to please prioritize the funds of the Equalization Fund so that the counties are able to carry out their programs as planned. Mr. Speaker, we have been told that now we have 34 and the list is here. And yet, at the same time, the sunset clause is soon to set in on this fund. We only have six years to go, and it may be prudent to come up with a, another bill to extend the fund, because as we have been told, not much has been done. Mr. Speaker, um, on even the areas that they have touched in, I was sitting here and wondering that what actually was the priority when they were disbursing the funds for the programs. What priorities? Did they do public participation with the people for the people to tell them what they wanted to do? I support their recommendation that the board has not been effective and I suggest, I support their suggestion that something should be done so that they probably have a more focused board that will be able to look at the interest of the people or work in the interest, in the best interest of the people of these regions. As they do this, it is important that the list be reviewed again to see if the position is still the same, the status is still the same. Some areas may have developed through other funds and may not need to be in this list again. Finally, Mr. Speaker, even as we sit in this house, we have seen, we have seen ourselves being marginalized from other regions. Marginalized in the manner in which allocations are being done for certain programs. And it should start with this house. We have seen people taking 400 million for power. Yes. One region. One, not even a region, one constituency. Yes. We have seen people taking a lot of money for roads, one constituency. Yes. And this, in other words, is also marginalization. So let us address these issues, let people be fair. Let's look at this country as one where each one of us pays tax and deserves taxes, I mean services. Thank you very much. And once again, I support. Thank you. Honorable Geoffrey Mwangi, the MP for Tetu. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me the opportunity to also lend my voice to uh, this very important uh, bill. Uh, Mr. Speaker, Allow me to say uh, from the onset that addressing issues of marginalization and issues of equalization is important, and this is one way to achieve national unity. It is sad to learn that today, uh, many years after this fund was uh, conceptualized, there are areas, the disbursements have been minimal, and it is only good that going forward that uh, the National Treasury ensures that the funds that have been earmarked for this fund are released and used for the interventions for which uh, they were intended. I would like to applaud the Senate for doing two very important things in, uh, in this bill. The first one is ensuring that they safeguard the bill from the usual cycles of, uh, of, of government expenditure, uh, whereby some of the funds that are allocated would uh, lapse, and also ensuring that they include uh, the administration of the fund by operationalizing uh, the Equalization uh, Fund Advisory uh, Board. Uh, but Mr. Speaker, having said that, uh, I think a good thing can be made better. And there is actually a lot of opportunity to improve uh, this fund uh, going forward. And Mr. Speaker, I wish to submit uh, the following. That one, as we come to the third comprehensive review uh, by CRA, I think it is time that uh, we ensure that uh, the formula that we are using uh, is looked at very, very closely so that the interventions that were intended by this fund actually uh, you know, bear fruit. We are talking about extending the number of years. You know, some people have here contributed saying we should extend uh, the, you know, the number of years that the fund has been given. But I don't think that is the solution. What we should also be, be talking about is how effective have the interventions uh, you know, that we have been making uh, been. We need clear documentation. We need clear monitoring. And we need regular reports to this House and the Senate as to what 
uh, results are we getting from these interventions? Otherwise, we can be on this marginalization journey uh, or interventions for so long, you know, without us getting, uh, you know, any result. These interventions must also be clearly uh, time-bound, and the data used, you know, must be very, very accurate. Mr. Speaker, also giving counties almost the full leeway of how this fund is utilized may not be, you know, the most appropriate uh, channel. We are all struggling with how counties are even using the little resources that we are giving them. So how do we come up with a hybrid solution where members of parliament through the NGCDF, where parent ministries and counties come together so that the interventions envisaged in this fund, you know, can be much more, uh, uh, you know, effective. And Mr. Speaker, if you also look at the money that has been provided, it's a drop in the ocean. We cannot be able to provide, uh, you know, uh, the solutions that we are looking for by allocating only 10 billion shillings. So for some of these counties, the, the equalization fund, while a necessary measure, may not necessarily be the solution we are looking for. We require a Marshall Plan, you know, to also ensure that uh, we can be able to accelerate the development that we are looking at these uh, uh, marginalized areas. But having said that, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Speaker, as I conclude, we also need to think about what is the definition of marginalization. For example, my own constituency, Tetu, does not appear in this list. But it does not have a level four hospital. So from a health point of view, we are marginalized. So I would expect that such intervention is included. I have not seen any sub-county from Nyeri County, where I come from. Kenny is actually a very dry area, almost the same as Samburu, or the same as Wajia. And it requires intervention for water, for schools, for electricity. So Mr. Speaker, as we expanded from 14 to 34, maybe it is time we took it to 47, and then we look at specific areas and specific issues of marginalization, because indeed, every country in this country, uh, every county in this country has some level of marginalization. I rise to support, and it is important that we get it right going forward. Thank you. The MP for Wajia West. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me this opportunity <laughs> to support this equality. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me this opportunity to contribute to this, to this Equalization Fund Appropriation Bill Number 2. And I want to start from onset. I'm supporting this bill. Mr. Speaker, the essence of this bill, of Equalization Fund, was to give 0.5% of the annual revenue of, this, of the budget specifically allocated to marginalized areas. The question begs, Mr. Speaker, where are these marginalized areas? And how did it come to the minds of the drafters of the Constitution during 2010? 2010 Constitution was drafted by brilliant minds who went all over this country, came to understand where is marginalized and where it's not marginalized. And they included this fund to bring some parts of this country at a bar, at a par in the, the rest of the countries. Mr. Speaker, it becomes now very worrying when all the counties in this country is classified as marginalized in the same marginalization fund which never grows from the 0.5%. Mr. Speaker, 34 counties have been indicated in this bill to benefit from the marginalization fund. Mr. Speaker, now, I want to uh, request the honorable members, let's change the name Equalization Fund and maybe change to something else because this is not Equalization Fund anymore. 
This is becoming like appropriating the budget fresh, a parallel budget for each and every county, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I have been hearing members, some members, saying some parts of their constituencies are dry. We are not, talk we are not talking about the climate, Mr. Speaker. We are talking about the problems, the challenges that is in that particular constituency. Let's take about Wajia West, Mr. Speaker. Sir. From one point, one health center to another is 200 kilometers, Mr. Speaker. For a mother to be taken from one village to the other, to the hospital, she, will, she dies in the middle if she doesn't get a private vehicle or an ambulance, Mr. Speaker. Somebody who has two kilometers health center, one kilometer health center, is today telling us here, is marginalized, Mr. Speaker. I want to appeal to the members of this house to come and visit my constituency at my expense, Mr. Speaker, so that they see and appreciate the problems the people of North are feeling, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, what we, the marginalization in Northern Kenya is still continuing as we speak. People are talking about Northern, Northeastern being given more than, more, of, more than of their share, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we are getting even less because the trillions that are appropriated in the national government are not trickling down to Northern Kenya, Mr. Speaker. You have seen just recently one of the constituencies in this country got 1.5 billion Kenyan shillings, Mr. Speaker, for roads, while my constituency got zero, Mr. Speaker. Zero. If we go by the budget, line by line, and see how much is going to the northern Kenya, Mr. Speaker, I believe most of this house, members of this house, will be shocked beyond words, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, let us not, it is either two things, Mr. Speaker. We increase the amount from 0 0.5 to 100% so that everybody benefits. Or we reduce the counties that are written in this appropriation bill so that the marginalized area should, be at, should, be, should come at, at a par with the rest of Kenya, Mr. Speaker. I don't have a single tarmac road in my constituency, Mr. Speaker. I don't have a, sing, a, a single level four hospital in my constituency, Mr. Speaker. I don't have a tap of water in anywhere in my constituency, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, and when you go to each and every other constituency, I am sure each household has a running tap of water. The difference is as clear as broad daylight, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we need, we should not be talking about something that we don't know. People should come to those constituencies, see for themselves, appreciate the challenges, and then talk from an informed position, Mr. Speaker, rather than, Mr. Speaker, people coming, talking about something that they don't understand or they don't know, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, there was a deliberate attempt from 1963 to date from, from particular persons or individuals of this country to marginalize a specific area further, Mr. Speaker. There is a deliberate attempt from those who hold high offices, Mr. Speaker, of this country to put some, to, to remove some, count, some counties in this, in this country from the map of Kenya, Mr. Speaker. And the way it looks, I'm sorry to say so, it might happen sooner or later. Mr. Speaker, there was the debate of one man, one shilling. There was a debate of equalization. There is a debate of so many things that just target specific areas and people can't see small amount of money trickling down to those areas. Wherein committees, and my brother Okelo is 
a witness here. Whenever we, na, we are appropriating money, nothing, even a single coin that goes to those areas. And every day we fight so that we take a, some amount of money to the same areas. Mr. Speaker, I want to beg the members of this honorable house to understand the dynamics, the problems, the challenges, some of the constraints they are facing, Mr. Speaker so that we should not politicize the lives of Kenyans, Mr. Speaker. We are here to represent the people of Kenya, all of us, Mr. Speaker. If me today I say, okay, for example, there is a uh, Mira fund that was allocated to, uh, 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 to Mira farmers. If me from Northern Kenya, who is not a Mira farmer, says, I want to also be allocated to Mira uh, funds. Is that appropriate? It's not. We should differentiate things. There are coffee farmers who are given a lot of money. There are tea farmers who are given a lot of money. Livestock farmers are left in the middle with no coin, no appropriation. It's only the committee, which I want to thank, just recently this budget, they have allocated one billion Kenyan shillings for restocking. And I want to appreciate and thank the chairman and the team for doing a great job for that particular event. Mr. Speaker, it hurts me as a member who represents the North and Kenya. When I see some other members mocking us in our face, Mr. Speaker, telling us you are getting more than your share, it's unfortunate, Mr. Speaker. I wish we could have give, I wish the speaker could have created a committee to go and verify and even do a research on the budget to see how much is going to each and every county or constituency so that we share equally. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for those few remarks and I support. The Honorable Dr. Joyce Osogo Ben Suda, followed by the Honorable Umulker Arun. Why don't you use less than uh, three minutes. What is this much you are talking on equalization fund? Proceed, uh, Honorable Bensuri. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. I don't need more than three minutes because what I want to talk about is very specific and they are just all facts. First of all, I rise, Mr. Speaker, to support the equalization bill that has been tabled by the Committee of Budget and Appropriations Committee. Mr. Speaker, I want to start by highlighting that in this country, we have what we call a rogue national treasury. And by defining rogue, to me is somebody who takes laws in his hands or her hands and doesn't conform to the existing laws. This house or any member of parliament or the county governors must not match to the national treasuries for them to effect any issue in terms of disbursement. Mr. Speaker, I take note that when we're investigating the telecom saga, National Treasury was implicated negatively. Mr. Speaker, when I sit in the committee for the centralized funds account, committee where we oversight what has been done and reported by the Auditor General, we realize that there are issues with disbursement from National Treasury in terms of the NGCDF funds and in terms of GAF funds. We are saying that this, this house is not junior to National Treasury, that we must beg, we must crawl, we must kneel for them to release funds. Mr. Speaker, when it comes to equalization uh, funds that was tabled, we noticed that 22 billion only has been released. And they're saying that there is laxity in disbursement of funds from the National Treasury. Mr. Speaker, I would like you to go on records that the PS National Treasury must be brought in this house and clear explanation to the facts that we are begging of and seemingly to be singing lullaby that the funds must be released. The PS National Treasury must respect this house and must respect the formula with which funds are supposed to be disbursed. Mr. Speaker, it is quite hurting that if 14 areas, counties, were identified as marginalized. I take cognizant that the Constitution respects what marginalization is. I want to 
I want to uphold whoever or the committee that increased the number from 14 to 34. In fact, I'm saying that they ought to have increased it totality to 47. Because this country is seriously undergoing economic marginalization. I'm just from the rural areas. When we look into Homer Bay, I visited quite a number of markets, Mr. Speaker, sir. All markets, most of them, they do not have electricity. They are crying of transformer. The MPs cannot implement what they are not given, what is not dispersed. The governor equally cannot implement what is not stretched. And so my serious number one fact, the national treasury must be disciplined, must stop being rogue. Number two, Mr. Speaker, sir, regulation and framework must be put in place. We need a clear tabling of what projects were supposed to be undertaken in the 14 counties. We looked through during the flood areas and we could watch over the television how farmers are suffering. The produce are getting rotten. There are no roads, there are no schools. And so we are saying, in as much as equalization funds were supposed to address infrastructure, supposed to address issues of education, health, we are saying we don't want to beg anybody over this. The same way we are budgeting and putting issues right. I want to see that when the budget for this financial year, next financial year, will be tabled in this house, this house must rise to maturity and not focus on the political divide. It is a high time this house must know that they choose to put Kenya on the right track or put Kenya into the drain dogs. And so I'm saying as legislators, we must stand firm that right things are done. We must not rise up for NGCDF on GAF to be given. Even the women reps of this country, we are marginalized in our own form. There are no funds, yet we are expected to work. We are waiting for what the president promised, one billion in the budget cycle. We have been given one billion for sanitary towers. We are also marginalized. We are waiting for one billion. We don't need to kneel unless as a, as a national assembly, we don't know why we were elected here. PS National Treasury, take charge, be disciplined, and serve this nation, and must be brought to the floor of this house. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for granting me this opportunity. The issue that we are discussing today touches very close to my heart because, because I come from a region that owns the crown of marginalization. And we might hear many people saying, even us, we are marginalized, but it is after devolution that we got the first national school. I had to travel all the way to Kiambu County to study my high school, to access a national school. Rarely do we see students being placed to national schools in Garissa County, because we have national schools now. That is the challenge that we are addressing in marginalization. And the reason this money was set aside was to bring these counties to come to the level of the other regions. But we are, we are seeing the debate going around of one man, one shilling. This discussion will further divide our country. We do not want to add any more wounds because when I hear one man, one shilling, I will stand here and say, one shilling, one kilometer so that every county from the marginalized areas get equal share of the national resources. Because we all pay taxes. We are not a guest of anybody. We deserve to get these resources. The only discussion that should be on the floor of this house is to audit how the monies were utilized, is to audit how equalization fund will be managed under the county government when national government projects are proposed. Because, Mr. Speaker, Two months ago, my, my people from the region I come from were washed away in a boat because they were attempting to cross a road. And when I hear my colleague Wandeto say even his constituency is marginalized, I went to that constituency. And even the roads leading to the cattle dip were, were, were tarmacked. And they were fully marked. And they had zebra crossings when I have never seen a tarmac road with my eyes. I come from a constituency that if it rains, I don't even make plans to go. Currently, I was not able to access my own county, my own constituency, because I needed to get a chopper. Mr. Speaker, I do not have money to get a chopper. I am only paid enough 
to fuel my car and go visit my home. But the, the floods come, we do not get budgets for, for dams. If this money is released and utilized appropriately, Mr. Speaker, we will get dams so that we do not have the issue of floods in my region. The farmers keep investing every, fina every rainfall season. By the time the droughts are coming, the floods have washed away our, our resources. Mr. Speaker, we have livestock. Monies meant for livestock are never seen in my region. So such debates should not focus or should not be politicized. It should be about equality. You cannot govern a country that is poor. You cannot govern a country that do not receive the equal share of resources. Mr. Speaker, it is very unfair for the debate to even go beyond what it should be. The focus should be on how to empower the existing communities One that note. are marginalized. The debate should be on that. But regions that have had hospitals per two kilometers are coming here to tell us we are marginalized. It is not a debate that we can stomach. It is not reasonable. Like I said, I need to find a boat every time it floods, while somebody can just drive down. So the conversation must take a different angle. We need to audit what has been released, how have these funds been allocated so that we are able to get equal share. But when central Kenya, for example, or regions that have always enjoyed monopoly of getting the national resources, come here and tell us we are marginalized, Mr. Speaker. Yet, schools in my region need to be built. CDF is building high schools, nursery schools. There is a demand for that because of the population increase. I come from a family where we are over 20. My mother has 30 sisters and 30 uncles. Yes, so that such resources are utilized equally. Our populations in ASAL regions are increasing because we have more than four wives. We have more than three wives and four wives. Places that have such demand to have nursery schools while other places are closing down because they have no schools, no children to attend their schools. They cannot get such resources. We have to fight for what is ours and we have to have a conversation that brings unity. One man, one shilling is a distraction. It brings hatred, it brings a lot of negativity. If one man, one shilling is brought, we will say one shilling, one kilometer. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Oh, the, the Honorable Jared Okello, what is the matter? The, the, uh, I thank you very much, Honorable then Speaker, then honorable even though Basta. called at the tail end of this session. Uh, but I've got a few remarks to make as regards the report on equalization fund, Honorable Speaker. A quick background of, of, over the same. When the drafters of our constitution came up with this idea, or birthed this idea, it was premised on the fact that certain regions had been alienated for way too long, and they needed to catch up with the rest who were regarded to be in the first league of development in this country. Honorable Speaker, since time immemorial, and this took a lot of precedence during the Moi era, there was a very backward and foolish mantra, Sia Sambaya, Maisha Mbaya, that if you had a contrary view to that of the government of the day, then your regions were sidelined on matters development. Where I come from, Honorable Speaker, Nyanza province to be specific, all successive regimes have given us a wide berth. And we have tried the much we can with the limited resources generated by our own people to make ends meet. We have met headwinds along the way. Certain times we have succeeded. Certain times we have failed because of lack of the same resources that are channeled to other regions. But here we are, just like anybody else. And when the drafters of our constitution came up with this idea and it was infused in law, the Council of Governors thereafter went to court and challenged this thing on who ought to have superintended these funds. Was it going to be the national government or the county government. And this matter dragged in our courts of law for over 10 years. The only time that these monies have been expended to deserving counties is once. And the projects that were earmarked to be funded by Equalization Fund 
are only 20% done. I sat in the special funds account committee in the last parliament and we visited a few and only 20% had been done. 11 years down the line. And this money had a time frame. It was not open-ended. And therefore, we have delayed, Honorable Speaker, to have it fully implemented. Honorable Speaker, you talk about marginalization. Six of my schools are still marooned to date as a result of flooding by River Nyando together with the lake that is coming out uh, into the The Honorable Basil, in two minutes, let the uh, mover to prepare to reply. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I think I'll move very quickly. From onset, I think as much as I support the Equalization Fund, I want to say I'm very much disappointed with the level of biasness in distribution of resources under Equalization Fund. I don't understand why IATA is missing from this list, considering that in IATA, most of my roads, 99.5%, are actually weather roads. Electricity connectivity is below 40%. The teachers employed by BOM, Mr. Speaker, are about 55%. So, Mr. Speaker, we need to shun away from negative ethnicity, tribalism, which is contributing to the level of disparity that we see. Mr. Speaker, I want to say that this fund should actually be managed by national government and baseline data should be the one to guide distribution of resources by not tribalism, Mr. Speaker. Because if we continue this way, we will be like what uh, Obama, the former president of the US, metaphorically said that it is easier for a child from central Kenya to celebrate the 50th birthday compared to a child from northeastern Kenya. And this has been witnessed because of continued skewedness of resource distribution based on where people come from, those who are in centers of authority. So, Mr. Speaker, this gap must be breached by ensuring that there is equity when we are distributing resources to be able to mitigate competition that has been witnessed when people in power or those who are looking for power are actually inspired because most of them are doing it simply because resources are not fairly distributed across the country. I support. Honorable Zamza Mchimba, can you say what you want to say uh, in, in two minutes? Okay, Sante Sana Mwishmiwa Speaker. Uh, na mimi niweze kuunga mjadala huu wa leo kwa ugavi wa uh, uh, mgao kwa wale familia ambazo zimetengwa mwishmi wa speaker. Mwishmi wa speaker nilikuwa naangalie katika waraka huu lioko hapa mwishmi wa speaker na napenda kuungana na wenzangu kuwa kuna sehemu ambazo mpaka sasa hata baada ya kupata uhuru hawana barabara, hawana maji wala hawana stima mwishmi wa speaker. Na mimi nataka niwambia wenzangu ambao wana upinzani katika uh, uh, mgao huu mwishmi wa speaker. Kenya ni moja. Hata Garissa akipata akiweza kuendelea na weweza kutoka kule uliko kenda kufanya kazi garisa ikawa maendeleo ya meenea kenya nzima mwishmi wa speaker watu wakaweza kukaa kwa, kuf, kwa ufanisi mwishmi wa speaker mwishmi wa speaker naangalia mahali kama ganze naangalia sehemu za pwani ambazo ziko nyuma sana hakuna barabara, hakuna maji hakuna mausiptali mwishmi wa speaker na jiuliza ikiwa hizi pesa zilibaki bilioni stina mbili mwishmi wa speaker zimebaki katika account na ni account ya nane na zafanya nini kule wakati wananchi wana shida mheshimi wa speaker ni dhahiri kuwa mheshimi wa speaker wabunge wenzangu waweze kukubali kuwa hizi pesa hata mimi ningeweza ku, ku, kusisitiza kuwa ziingie kwa mikono za wabunge wetu wabunge waweze kupawa pesa hizi waingie kule sehemu ambazo zimetengwa waweze kufanya maendeleo mheshimi wa speaker garisa akipata tanariva akipata kwa wale wakifanya mafani, uh, maendeleo mheshimi wa speaker hata mimi mama Mombasa nitakuwa na wepesi wa kutembea zile sehemu ikiwa barabara iko sawa kuna maji na kuna maendeleo pia mimi naweza kutoka nikaingia katika kaunti zile nikafanya uh, kazi mheshimi wa speaker kwa hiyo na support asante sana mover Why is the MP for Fafi looking at the mover in that manner? 
Uh, thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable yes. Speaker, next to me is a member for Narok South and he's been here for quite a long time. Allow me to give him one minute. You want to donate some time to the MP for Fafi? How many minutes I have, uh, Mr. Speaker? You have less than uh, four minutes. Then I can only donate one minute. Proceed, MP for Narok. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I rise to support this budget. You know, Mr. Speaker, the intention of the constitution of this country uh, for introducing uh, the equalization fund was to bring the most marginalized area, which, which is one of these countries where I come from, Narok South, uh, to the, where the rest of the Kenyans are. In terms of uh, development, there are areas in this country uh, where the road network is almost does not exist. Uh, the schools, water, hospital, like electricity, connectivity in Narok South, it's only 8%, where in this country there are some constituencies which are 100% connected. 